Yo, what's up guys? Jared Tebow here. Uh, working on building my new Techno NB48 2.1 for the Worlds coming up in Spain. And I uh, just figured I'd shoot a little video. Show you guys uh, building the car. Um, I don't really use the manual too much when I build cars. But uh, cracked open some bags. I think I have A, B, and C maybe cracked open. Um, pretty much just they start with the diffs. So we'll just go ahead and get started. Um, this new 2.1 comes with these new uh, diff gear or uh, diff cups. Um, 2.1 comes with new diff gears too, um, kind of all of our new updated diff stuff. I'm actually building my car with the old diff cups. Uh, you can do it either way. The kit comes new, get new diff cups with the uh, old kind of standard round shims. And so I use the new kind of key in shims. You can kind of see it there. So you can go one way or the other. Um, I wouldn't really do both. If you do use the new cups, I wouldn't use the new keyed in shims. If you want to use the old cups, I'd use the keyed in shims. Basically what you get with the, uh, kind of with both is um, the new cup or the keyed in shim is to help with the oil from kind of like over spinning, over spooling up in the diff. And so I choose the old cup just so I can get a little bit more oil in my diff. Um, so yeah, that's kind of the reasoning behind that. I'm gonna start here with the O-rings. Just put some O-ring grease on. I like to kind of get my stuff all prepped up and then just kind of knock them all out at the same time. So then I use the Kyosho Ring Gear Grease. It's just like a nice uh, white grease for where the bearings are going to go. So like I said, I'll kind of prep all three discs. Throw the bearings on there. Do the same thing for the spur gear and the ring gear. Throw those bands on. I'll do the same for the out drives. This car, um, being my world's car and stuff, I'm going to use the Techno lightweight out drives. About the center. I use the same white grease coat kind of the slot for the where the o-ring goes so make sure to put the center out drives in the center spur gear and then the cup that I'm going to use for the center work on the front and rear You don't need too much grease here, but just, uh, you know, have it fully coated. It just helps your diffs to stay smooth 
for the out drives not to bind up in the gear, ring gear, spur gear, or the diff cup. Pliers out. So then, got my o rings all with the o ring grease on. Put the o ring on first, slide the shim down. Again, I'm using the, uh, the new shims that um, kind of lock into the cup. Push that down fully with the pliers. There we go. And I'll go ahead and put the sun gear in. Make sure it keys in there nice. So if you're using the keyed in shims, you need to put the gasket on first. Then you put the shim on over the gasket. Go ahead, put your pin through. And on the gear side, you gotta make sure everything's lined up properly for when we uh, put that all together. O-ring, shim. And then the pin. Some gear. So I can leave it here on the towel. Pretty stoked to be building this fresh kit. Really happy with this new 2.1 car. Our 2.0 was great, but uh, you know, a whole new platform, um, you really learn a lot and so we've we've learned a lot with that car and so it was just kind of time to put everything that we've learned into a whole new car and uh, man i think they did they did a phenomenal job so super stoked this is actually my first 2.1 kit official kit being built really excited to be building a fresh car for the world's Super excited that the World Championships are back, going to Spain. Track looks awesome. And yeah, cannot wait to get out there. O-ring, shim. Some gear, boom. All right. Oh, gotta put the gasket on first. Going together pretty good here. stuff all put together gonna throw some oil in gonna go 663 <clears throat> just kind of my base that I'm running right now um, so what I do 
I always start with just the sun gear in there. Put the oil in, kind of rotate it around, get some bubbles going. So I'm going to go six center, six front. Obviously going to Spain, I'll probably start higher there. But uh, I'm going to break this car in this week at my local track. So just kind of putting on the setup that I would want to be running there. Of course, got your JTP diff oils going in. If you don't have these, check out shopjtp.com. Order yourself up some. They work awesome. All right. Like I said, I just have the sun gear in, kind of put all the oils in there. All the oil in uh, with just that gear, kind of twist it around, get the bubbles popping out. This car also, I am building with aluminum cross pins, Techno aluminum cross pins. I'll go ahead, start putting those in. Nothing too fancy here. Just want to make sure everything keys in nice and good. Got the cross pins in there. Got the oil settling in there nice. If you put most of the oil in first before you put all these gears in, then uh, you just don't have to wait to wait as long to build um, to kind of finish finish the diff because the oil is getting underneath the gears and everywhere it needs to be. A little fuzzball on there. Busted out a brand new orange towel, so I'm getting some fuzz on my hands. There we go. Got that one going in. Last one. It's pretty self explanatory with these cross pins. They have slots in them so they key in. So, obviously, your first one that you put in the slot here you can see that goes up and then your second cross pin the slot goes down so they key in like a Lincoln log and our cross pins they key in on the side of the diff cup as well which is nice all right, got them all three in there. The center, not quite sure if I have enough grease or enough oil, I mean. Just gonna add a little bit. Sometimes I like to put it right kind of behind where the cross pins are if I'm adding any, just to make sure it gets back there. And then go ahead, set the last sun gear on top. <clears throat> I rotate it just a little bit to get some of the bubbles going.
Got my front going here. And then the rear. Bubbles up over a little bit. I just kind of let, let it sit, get all the bubbles out. <clears throat> so there's not too many. Get my drill ready here. Gotta have MIP drill tips. I will be putting Lunksford titanium screws in these diffs. So uh, keeping it kit length, I think they're uh, 14. So it looks like the center is about ready. What I do, I'll kind of wipe my finger around the top, get the excess oil off. You want oil to be everywhere in the diff um, behind the cross pins and then you want it below flush pretty much just below like the very top of the sun gear um, I take the oil out from behind the sun gear as well. Just use my wrench. See if you can <clears throat> see the level there. You want it just below the top of the sun gear. If you fill your diff, if you overfill your diff, you'll have leaking. Um, basically, when it all heats up, builds pressure in there and You'll start leaking out. Now the tricky part with these uh, keyed in shims is it has to key in on the top too. So you wanna make sure your pin and your shim are lined up exactly in the middle of your holes so that when you can put it together it will pop in and then what I do is I spin it just a little bit to make sure it's all keyed in. I use a 1.5, put in the screw hole a little bit just to make sure my gasket is perfectly centered in the hole so I don't tear up my gasket. Then something that I do with my techno cars is um, hopefully my glue tips not all clogged up looks like it might be yes see if I can free this glue tip up oh there we go um, I glue in my screws into my diff cup uh, just something that I've kind of found um, with the with the techno cars. I'm not sure if it's just like a material thing or something. Is sometimes the screws will loosen up some, so I always glue my screws in. Uh, even you know every time I change my diff oil, you're not going to screw up the threads or anything like that. Um, it's totally fine to do that. Sometimes if you're sloppy with the glue, you might mess up your gasket a little bit. But I put the glue straw in the hole, just get a little bit of glue in there. And I won't run these all the way in. I like to kind of feel the last bit with my hands. If you're using a drill to start new holes, just try to make sure you get it in nice and straight so you don't mess up the holes or anything in your new diff cup. You 
one thing to note as well when you're building a fresh car um, you have fresh diff gears inside the diff and then with a fresh gasket um, you just run it a little bit and then go ahead open them up put fresh oil in there and then kind of reseal it up i feel like new gaskets leak sometimes um, just because they need to get kind of smashed down a little bit and then with new diff gears internal you'll want to have just a little bit of a break-in period um, and just in that break-in period they will uh it'll dirty up the oil some just because you have you know, like the machine oil and stuff coming off the diff gears. Um, man, this thing feels butter smooth. Then what I do, just take like my 1.5, kind of put it in these back holes where the screws are, just in case you got a little wild with the glue. You cannot have it pull up super hard. So there's a center. Go ahead and mark that with the 6K. Move on to the front. Same thing, oil is kind of settled down, run around on the top, get the excess oil out. So I'm good and flush, just like right at the top of that gear when it's pushed all the way down or just below get that gear lined up with the cross pin and like i was saying you want to make sure this is all lined up good so that your pin goes into the sun gear and then those keyed in shims key in. And like I said, I'll just rotate it a little bit. Make sure I'm fully keyed in. Which it's all looking good. A little bit of glue. Whoops. Drop my nice screw, darn it. Man, these fresh long screws, they're like looking in a darn mirror. These things are sweet. Throwing these things around. Last screw going in. Run them in the rest of the way by hand. You want to like decently snug your diff cup screws, but not like get all Hulk on them. Um, you just kind of crush the gasket more, but you do want to tighten them down. Um, that's kind of where like I do the glue because I don't want to like overly crank these things, but you get them pretty good and snug. Um, I've just found the gluing uh, with the Techno Diffs just kind of helps keep the screws in place, keep my diffs from leaking. So boom, there's a the front. Done. Going to mark that. Front six K. I gotta find my freshy screw I threw on the ground. Darn it. Didn't go too far. We dialed in. Alright, last diff, the rear. Got the three K in it. Wiping off the excess here. Make 
make sure the slot is lined up for the sun gear. Get everything lined up good. Oh, there we go. You can kind of hear that pop when it uh, gets all the way in right. Sitting the flush on there. Put my glue in. And the four screws. Take your time when you have a new diff cup just to make sure those holes get threaded good. You know, if the screw's going a little sideways, just stop it. Make sure it goes in nice and straight and good and clean. Finish it off by hand. lost her. You don't want to just like overly tighten one side so just kind of go around. I just kind of go around in a circle snugging them up um, just so the disc good and good and straight and solid. Just wiping off some of the oil. Turn in nice and smooth. Brand new diff gears. You know, it doesn't, if it feels crunchy, it's not right. Um, but you will feel a little bit of these gears when it's brand new, especially with these new gears. If you are an avid techno builder, then your old 2.0 gears built pretty darn smooth right from the get go. You couldn't feel those gears much. So these, you're gonna feel them a little bit more, um, but as long as it's nice and smooth, you don't have any like notches, any tight spots, anything like that, you, uh, you should be all good to go. There we go. Three diffs built up, ready to rock. Next thing we're gonna do is move on into the bulkheads, front and rear. Like I said, I'm not too much into uh, following the manual. I didn't even bring my manual over here, actually. So, probably should, just to take a little peek at it. I like to just crack open the bags that I'm gonna be working on. Kinda spreading the parts out. Move my discs over here. But these Technon cars, man, they go together. Stinking good. And their manuals are really good, actually, to be honest. So if you're into using manuals, Techno manuals, pretty legit compared to some of the other cars that I have built in my racing. All right, crack open these screw bags. Just kind of dump everything out there. Should have brought my trash can a little closer. There we go, there we go. So, um, with this new car, both 
front and rear bulkheads are flat, um, not angled up in the front anymore. The rear one does is a little bit different than the front where it has the two bigger bearings. So that's kind of how you can tell front and rear apart from each other. Let's go ahead and start putting these bearings in. Put the pinions in. Sometimes the bearings will go in like a little bit cockeyed. And when that happens, um, when you go to push your pinion in, you'll tell it'll go through one bearing good, the next bearing is kind of gets stuck. If that kind of happens, uh, pop the bearings back out, put them back in, maybe even put the inner bearing on the pinion and try to get it to go in like really flat. Um, if you still kind of have some issues, you can, once you put it in, you can kind of try to move it around and just get the bearings seated good. Uh, these both set in really nicely. They come with a little shim to put on the outside of the pinion gear. On the shaft part, that's mainly just to have the correct um, spacing and everything when you put your center drive shafts on. So I use a red Loctite on my center drive shafts. Go ahead, put the set screw on my wrench. New set screw. I'll uh, wipe it down a little bit just to get the machining oil off. Put red Loctite. With Loctite, after you put it on, you want to run the threads through your fingertip a little bit um, just so you don't have a big blob of Loctite making a hot mess everywhere. Make sure you put the front drive shaft on the front bulkhead. And what I do here, I just set it on really loose so you can see it moves in and out. And then I spin it so I can tell how free the bearings are because that's exactly how I want it to feel when uh, I push this thing all the way on because if you just push it up against the bearing really hard, now it's really bound up feeling because it's smashing those two bearings. And when you do that, you have a chance of um, destroying your bulkhead because it will overheat and start to melt that plastic and your car will be bound up. So it's exactly perfect. Um, you want it as tight as it can be without crushing the bearing. So you almost want to be able to have like a tiny bit of play, but not really. And then now the bearing feels good and smooth. So I actually got lucky. That was like my first try, which I'm really picky about that. So normally it takes me like a bajillion tries. Then since I'm using MIP wrenches, bust out my JTP MIP T handle torque these babies down nice and tight because not planning to take that off for a long time and you don't want it coming off during a race move on to the rear clean the set screw and then red loctite Get it all in the threads. You don't want to make a mess with Loctite. If you have too much, it gets in any of these pins. It will completely bind up your drive shaft and your car will not be stoked. And you won't be stoked with your new purchase. Again, put this one on so it's loose, moves back and forth so I can feel exactly how free those bearings are. You know, new bulkhead, new bearing, it's not going to be crazy free, but 
you can definitely feel the difference when you over tighten it and bind it up oh, a little too much gap All right, so trying to get this shimming correct where you can just not quite really move it, but where you're not binding up this bearing. Close, I feel like I have just a little bit of play. That front one, I think I got lucky. So that one went too smooth. So now I got no play and it's tight. It's kind of like a magic trick getting this exactly how it should be. Like a cruel, miserable magic trick. I think I got it. Get my T-handle on it not snap anything oh yeah we dialed in we dialed in all right next thing here i like to just put these bottom caps on um like i said don't really follow the manual I actually grab the manual here boom just to peek at it this did that there we go oh see it says to put that in towards the end but so we're working on front and rear at the same time manual goes front first that's cool I'm going to go ahead and just put these bad boys in. I have a 1.5 bit for my drill. Don't really feel like these screws are drill worthy. So, going OG. Putting them in with the hand tool here. It's nice and snug. Don't need to do anything crazy. Do the front. I like these. I'm a, I'm definitely a fan of having these on the techno cars. Keeping the inside of the bulkheads nice and clean. Keeping the ring and pinion nice and clean. Boom. Getting the front one on. So I guess here we can just uh, do the next step, which is fit the diff in. I like to always just put it in, no shims, check the side to side movement, because you have two different things to check when you are putting a diff in a car. Lots of people just talk about backlash, which is kind of the gear mesh of your ring and pinion gears but you also have the side to side you need to make sure your side to side is pretty snug so that your diff doesn't move around so this is a front i have the front bulkhead so i put one shim just on the gear side put it in there go side to side still loose check my backlash Feels fine, but it's hard to tell when the diff moves side to side. So I'm going to put another shim on the other side. Diff went in pretty good. It's pretty, uh, no side to side movement. Check the backlash. Has a little bit of backlash, but honestly, these techno cars, the 
I'm not worried about skipping at all. I will go ahead, put both shims on the gear side, just to see what that feels like. Not much backlash. Let's see what it says in the kit. Um, use. Yeah, it doesn't really talk about shims. It had some shims. Um, in there so I think it you know obviously comes with the shims doesn't really say too much about it um, two shims on this one's working good I don't really like my backlash to be that tight that's kind of car specific some cars bulkheads aren't super sturdy We'll get some flex. You need your backlash to be a little bit, you know, it's a little bit more critical. Our our stuff, it's not, especially on a front, definitely not going to have any worry. So I'm going to move it back to one shim on each side. I'm going to get my JTP copper grease. I kind of have it in the big tub because I'm fancy like that. I'm gonna pop this back out. Use my 1.5. Kind of just get it on here in a couple spots. This copper grease, it it can make a mess. Um, you know, just if you kind of get it on a lot of stuff, but man, it works so good. It's by far the best grease I've used, which is why I sell it as JTP. I feel like it stays, you know, kind of wet um, so it doesn't like dry out. It's not like you have to, you know, just crack open your bulkhead to reapply. So I just put it on a couple different spots, spin it all around, make sure it's fully covered. That's good to go. Then when you have the shims, you want to make sure that you don't smash any of the shims, get them all crooked, because then your uh, drivetrain could be bound up a little bit. Now we're going to go ahead, swap over the tip to the 2.5, which I thought I got out. Well, clearly didn't it. Um, put in these screws, which again, going to be using Lungsford screws. Kit length here, it's a 14 I'm pretty sure. Got that plastic just crying. Don't run them all the way in with the drill, especially the first time. Boom, that front one, spinning good and free. Diff doesn't move side to side. That one's good to go. Throw the rear in, just like I did the front, no shims. Moves a little side to side. One shim on the gear side. Try it like that first. See, like this one, it's not really moving at all side to side. So, for this one, I'm gonna say that one shim on the gear side is all it needs. That thing's feeling money. Gonna get the copper grease out again. A little on my wrench. Apologize for the video, you guys can't really uh, 
zoom in and kind of get any closer. Kids are at school today. Megan's at work today. So I am a one man show. Boom, got the grease on. Just rotate the, rotate the diff some. Get it nice and coated. That beautiful copper grease. Yeah, just not moving at all side to side. The mesh felt great with the backlash. Put the two screws in. You might not hear that sound with the steel screws. I think the Lungsford screws, like the thread diameter is maybe just like a tiny bit bigger. So hear that plastic whine in a little bit. When you got that copper grease on anything, make sure you get it off because it will make a mess. Clean up my 1.5 wrench. So boom, we got front and rear. I believe the next thing it will say is to put the shock towers on. Front shock tower, 2.1, comes with these awesome new upgraded towers with the uh, double row on the front camber link. And we kind of call them half holes on the upper shock mounts if you had the original 2.0, these upper shock locations on these updated or 2.1 towers are closer. So there's kind of in between holes. Um, our car, I feel like is pretty sensitive to where the shocks are on the tower and for different conditions, um, you know, we move those around quite a bit. So the half holes really just help with the fine tuning and make sure that you're getting the best experience out of your techno ride and just with your RC experience in general. Again, I don't run my screws all the way in with the drill. I'm not super into stripping out screw holes in the plastic. So I would recommend, especially on a fresh kit, run them you know, right before they kind of get all the way in, just so you don't strip anything out. Boom, rear tower going on, making sure it's the rear bulkhead. And the way that I run my wing mount, I can go ahead and put these upper screws in because I run my wing mount raised up just one position, which is the plus seven height. I run the HB wing. If you run that wing, I would recommend going to the plus seven height. If you run the stock techno wing, I would recommend just going in the standard uh, stock location, which let me bust out the manual to make sure that's accurate. It might have you put it up. Um, wing mount high. Stock position is plus seven. So you have zero plus seven stock plus 12 as an option. If it was me and I was building this car and planning on running the techno wing, I would run it in the zero position personally. Um, that's where I feel like it works best with the stock techno wing, but you can build it however uh, you desire there. Um, so I guess that can be our next step here. Just doing the wing. 
Let's see, what screw size does it say? Um, a 25. It does all these screws with the 14. I'm kind of crazy with having long screws and a bunch of threads sticking out. It drives me absolutely nuts. So, I will use a 12 here instead of the 14. Fourteen's totally fine. I'm just kind of crazy. You can ask Graham or my wife. They will uh, agree that I'm crazy with certain weird little things. So when you run it raised, you will have four screws going through with nuts on the back side. Close that up. Get my uh, Techno turnbuckle wrench that has a 5.5 five on one side. Get these nice and snugged up here. Boom. All right, we're looking good. I guess we'll crack this open. See what it's saying here. Let's see. We did front, rear, uh, body mount, which I haven't seen this new body mount, which is super sweet. It's got it's cut on the back for the new tower. Has two mounting holes. Shock tower with the two mounting holes. Um, if you put these on your other car, on your 2.0, you would know that you had to cut your, uh, cut your body mount. You only had the one hole, so the thing would be kind of bouncing around, acting a little silly. Not bouncing around. Would move side to side a little bit. Um, so yeah, new body mount. Use both holes here. Using the kit recommended length of 14. You could use shorter if you really wanted to, but I don't have too many 12s. So, I'm going to keep the 14. It's probably not going to change my life to have, you know, a longer screw than you really need. Get that on. And this thing is looking good. Love me some fresh Lungsford turn, Lungsford titanium screws. I was getting excited for my brand new turnbuckles that I got. Alright, <clears throat> now let's talk incentive. I'm going to skip that. We're going to skip bag E and go straight to the F bag. I skipped everyone's favorite bag. I guess I opened that one already. Let you just figure that out. All right, 
Got all these extra steel screws up here that I didn't use. All those 14s crack into bag F. Since I'm crazy, I'm going to just open bag G at the same time. Just to get all these parts out here. Alright, we got suspension pills. We got arms. Move that. 